All right, here we go. The uh, the reaction to the uh, fucking horrible game that we saw on Monday night. I know you guys are probably somewhat interested in my response to this based on um, all the DMs I got on Instagram and, uh, you know, all the shit I copped at work walking into into work today, uh, first day of the week, which is fantastic. I know in the past some of you kind of taken exception to me making Eagles videos and, and too many of them, but I made one a few weeks ago about how the Eagles are cooked after losing to Essendon. You know, I, I kind of thought at the time, you know, that, that'll do for a while, you know. It would take something uh, incredible for me to need to make another video with, within four weeks or even towards the end of the season, but I think we've hit that point. We've hit the point uh, where something so incredible has happened that uh, I need to uh, I need to talk about it. And you know, based on the comments uh, on my latest video today, just the tips, which was filmed right before um, the Eagles took on North Melbourne, people were interested in my reaction um, and quick to give me shit. But you know what? That's fair play. That's fair play. A few people pointing out. Uh, that I've made fun of North earlier this year by pretty much making a joke out of uh, their attendance figures for each of their games, um, which is fair play. You got me. We fucking suck. I deserve that. I have teased North Melbourne. It is all in good fun. Um, I think I think there's a lot to be um, optimistic about at North Melbourne, to be honest. I certainly criticise the way you know that they sort of entered their rebuild by cutting all their players, um, but I think it's fair to say what we've seen the last four to six weeks of them um, I have a lot more faith in the way that rebuild is trending. Um, so the jokes are just jokes, but fair play, you got me. Um, I think a few people have picked up on the fact that I said, you know, the Eagles had too much pride to lose to North Melbourne. And fair enough, I was fucking wrong. To maybe explain that a little bit better, it wasn't so much, you know, disrespecting North Melbourne saying we have too much pride to lose to a team like that. My thought was we can't possibly have a two-week stretch, you know, like we did against the Bulldogs, like we did against Sydney, uh, and not respond. This team has too much character, but, you know, got that wrong too. To be fair to West Coast, that is fairly true. You know, we, we've we we've had shit games this year, and then we've turned it on the following week. I mean, I remember the, the first derby of the year against Fremantle. We would just come off the 100-point loss against Geelong. We were pretty happy to kind of sweep that shit under the rug um, because we turned it on for probably what is still our best performance of the year, that first derby. I think after that round four loss, or I think it was against St. Kilda, um, we came out and torched uh, Collingwood. I think it was at the time. We didn't realize how bad Collingwood were. So anyway, I had faith that the Eagles would put in more effort. Um, and, you know, it sounds stupid to say, but Monday night was an improvement. We played better on Monday night than the previous two weeks. Um, and still couldn't get it done against the bottom side. We, we need to contextualize this a little bit. I think North deserve a lot of credit. I think they're playing good football in the last few weeks. Um, and, and we saw against the Dogs, who were a relatively informed side, who had just battered us the week before. You know, they, they showed spirit, and, uh, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. And they certainly didn't look like a bottom side out there, but that is not to excuse the Eagles too much for this result. Watching the game was absolutely infuriating. I, I know I live streamed Sydney versus West Coast the week before, um, and heaps of people jumped on. That was almost a fun stream in the way, you know, it was almost funny how pathetic the Eagles were at that point. But, you know, the GMHBA factor, the fact that we never beat Sydney, I, I, I kind of thought, you know, it was the, the only response was to possibly laugh. Um, but to contrast that with North Melbourne, I was just absolutely fucking filthy. So I will try and keep the, the swearing to a minimum, but um, anger is definitely one of the emotions I had watching that game. And the stupid thing was, and it, we, we should have killed that game at halftime. The game should have been over. 35 inside 50s to 12. It, we, we led the game by eight points and largely due to the fact that Oscar Allen kicked in a great goal right on halftime. Um, you know, it was two points for most of that quarter. Three goals, 10. The intensity was up. We're not a good wet weather side, but we were winning the contest. We were smashing them in clearances and I think contested possessions, we were, you know, battering them as well, if I'm not mistaken. We were certainly winning that stat. Uh, and the inside 50s and supply, it was all going our way. We just couldn't score, um, which is unsurprising due to the conditions. But as we know so much in football, you can dominate a half. You cannot put a team away. Uh, and you leave the door open and things can change in the second half, which is what ultimately happened. Being eight points up at halftime, I was still very confident. Why wouldn't you be? You know, we've just completely outplayed them. Um, and I thought, you know, the, the effort level was good. And that's why to that point, I was relatively satisfied because I just had faith, you know, there's no way North Melbourne were going to outwork us. Um, but sure enough, they got on top in the third quarter, um, which is not unexpected. You know, the games ebb and flow, and it's about making the most of your opportunities when you have dominance. Um, and unfortunately, they did. And I think our backline got really 
really exposed and we're really quite poor. And I, I actually think the back line um, is a bit of a shambles at the moment, but we'll, we'll get into some of the more structural issues we have. North completely dominated the third term, really evened up the contest. And, uh, you know, we're a couple of goals in front at three quarter time, I think. And I, I still had faith we'd have some sort of response, you know, like... I don't think that's unfair to ask. Sure enough, it came, kicked a couple of really good goals, a couple of inspiring goals in that last quarter. And when we got a two-goal lead, I thought, all right, we've, well, maybe not won, but I thought, you know, things will be okay from here. We've broken the back of it. Um, and unfortunately, I think the players thought that too, because that was where the effort level just completely dropped off. The effort level was there at times, and it it's just so inconsistent, and it almost came out in desperation. I can remember a couple of clearances where Yo is trying to do it all himself. Shui is busting his ass trying to get a clearance, but it's like, mate, I love you, but why aren't you doing that the whole game? Why are you only doing it when it's becoming very realistic? We're about to lose. And I, I the thing is with this Eagles midfield, it's, it's good on paper, but I swear to God, we perform better as a midfield unit when we have our stars out. And it's ridiculous. We've been playing the, peddling the excuse, you know, all year, you know, Injuries have been brutal to key players, and that is true, and I stand by that. We've seen Sheed monster some midfields in his time. Even Redden, someone who probably doesn't get a lot of respect around the league as being a decent player, because, you know, he's about the fifth or sixth string midfielder. He's probably been one of our more consistent and more reliable players this year for the most part. When all the players come back in, I, I do wonder, and I'm starting to see it, is there a sense of someone else will do the work. Someone else will get this clearance and I'll get the first possession and I'll look great because I've been fed the ball. Is that, is that what's happening? Because it's just so frustrating, the inconsistency of effort around the contest. But that's not even the worst part. The worst part is just the negative mindset and it's what it frankly is quite a, it's a really poor game plan that we have at the moment. So we've always been this side that's been really good at moving the ball by foot. Um, we've cut teams up in probably in particular 2018 and 19 uh, with some really good ball use out of the heart, uh, back half and being quite attacking with our ball use. And I can't count the amount of times I've seen this year where we'll take a mark, turn around and chip it kick it forward and then kick it to the far wing for a switch, you know, switches are fine, but the player who receives the switch then doesn't look forward and kicks it backwards again. Why, what valid reason is there for you to not look forward when you take a mark after a switch? What it is, is a mindset that is so scared of making mistakes because we play a slower chip mark game style. And I, I, I guess we model it off Geelong who do it really, really well. We are so scared of turning the ball over that we don't use the ball creatively at all. And then we eventually make a fucking mistake anyway and concede the goal. I can't remember if we're 17th or 18th, but we're one of the worst sides in the comp from moving the ball from our back 50 to our forward 50. And it shows like, you know, you always used to go to a game and, and fans would groan boo when we'd switch. And it's like, okay, you guys clearly don't understand why we're switching. You're obviously trying to get around a zone. The opposition team's set up. We're waiting for a break in it. But we're not even trying anymore to cut it up. We're passing it backwards and hoping someone else makes the risky kick. And eventually, you know, we fucking turn it over. Now, it's a mindset issue. And I don't know what to extent they're coached to do that. But I saw a senior player in Brad Shepard do that exact thing. Someone kicked it to him, didn't look forward, kicked backwards. I refuse to believe Someone has coached him to do that. Don't mean to throw Shepard under the bus. Specifically, he's not the only one who's done it, but I saw that and I got angry. We're a side that is not strong in the contested stakes. We almost set up like Richmond to the fact that we're probably going to lose, you know, the contested ball, the, the post-clearance contested ball differentials like our worst stat. So it's good at center clearances because we have the dominance of Nick Nat, who as far as I'm concerned, has had a pretty good year to be honest. But if he's not there to spoon feed it to us, we are absolutely dog shit. But for a team that sort of concedes that they're going to lose that, you can't also be really bad defensively and be really bad at moving the ball from your back half to your front half. Now, bizarrely, we probably have one of the best forward lines in the comp and people bristle at and say, that's bullshit. But I don't know what the stats reflect now, but at one point in the season, we were the single best team at converting inside 50s to scores. And it would be you know self-evident we'd have far less scoring shots, far less inside 50s. And we've definitely pinched a couple of games where we probably didn't deserve to win, but we were so efficient in front of goal that we plucked a win somehow. The goal kicking for the most part this year has been fantastic, but it almost you, you can almost see this coming. Like how sustainable is it that if you're winning games because you're a more efficient team inside 50, what do you do when you're out of form or you know the conditions aren't suited to goal kicking? That's Both of those things are happening right now and we're not even getting close to winning games. You could see the players getting frustrated on the field, which is 
you know, it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. At least there's, there was a bit of fight in them in this game. Like North were getting up us. We were getting up them. Jamie Cripps was being a little prick in the, in a great way. You know, we, we love to have players like that. But I thought it was going to motivate us and lift us and we were going to beat them into the ground. And the opposite happened. North grew a leg. We didn't have an answer. And that is fucking pathetic. It, it just shows how shit this final eight race is that we are still sitting eighth at the moment because we are playing like a team that I, I, I'd say if, you know, those power ranking videos I do, I would honestly have us with Richmond and Hawthorne very close to the bottom. I think that's fair to say. Finals isn't even really a realistic consideration for me at the moment. I don't think we're good enough to be there. And if we are, then that's an indictment on the rest of the comp because some of this football has probably been the worst since 2013. And that was when the ass fell out of this team and John Worsfold eventually you know, gave up because he didn't have those heart in anymore. Now, the issues aren't just purely game plan. Obviously, that needs to be tweaked because it's fucking horrid if you ask me. But we are still a lot worse than we were at the start of the season. So it's not simple it's it's too simplistic to say our game plan is the reason you know we're playing like a bottom four team there's been a clear drop off from the start of the season this is clearly the worst football we've played this year so a lot of that is confidence but it doesn't explain the drop off to this extent it doesn't and you know call me a biased eagles fan but the the quality of the eagles list at the moment should be at least competing for top four. Like it's conceivably in the top four. Let's call it top six. If you want to be conservative, that's fine. That's probably, where we, I mean, that's where we finished the last couple of years anyway. The difference between us and Richmond at the moment is, you know, Richmond have those injuries and, you know, aging stars. And we can't really blame any of our form on either of those two factors. The injury list is the best it's been all year. Um, and, you know, the, st- the age demographic of our list is still pretty good. A lot of our stars are, you know, between that 27 to 30 range. Uh, you McGovern's, even Shuey's nowhere near, you know, dropping off. I know he's not playing great footy at the moment, but you can still see he's a good player. Kelly's 27. You know, Yo's been playing some good footy as well. And to be honest, Hearn and Kennedy have been two of our better players this year, and they're the closest to retiring. Um, I've just talked up Jack Redden. Long story short, what I'm saying is it's not a, an aging list that's coming to the end of a period. It's a, it's a it's a group that is so much capable of so much more really horribly underachieving and it's time to swing the axe and i swear to god if we just drop archie uh, and bring in hutchings this week uh, bring in vardy is like our great savior this week like that is just i'm half expecting it to be honest we need some more aggressive you know axings this week and i think a couple of players that come to mind, Jack Darling, Jeremy McGovern. So what, $1.2 million a year? He has not been the same player since he signed that contract. I'm not saying ditch these players permanently, but they are not good enough to warrant a spot in this side. And we've got players we need to develop. Jared Brando, Bailey Williams, these guys are, could be a big part of this team for a long time. It's time to give those guys opportunity. Jamie Cripps is another one. You know, it's hard to really formulate an argument why he's kept his spot as long as he has. He's clearly off the boil. People are very critical, you know, of Adam Simpson in particular. And I, I think, to be fair, I think Simpson's very lucky that he's not in a contract year. I think he signed like a three-year extension this year. And I love Simpson, premiership coach, and I don't like turning over coaches. But I do think he is lucky this is not a contract year because he might not get an extension based on what we're seeing so far. So people can probably get over the idea that we're going to sack Simpson in the COVID landscape at the moment. We can't afford to pay a coach out $3 million and then replace him to the tune of, you know, close to that anyway. You just cannot afford that. So we're stuck with Simo. We just need a better game plan philosophy and to be honest a bag of fucking cement for some of these players they need to harden up and i know i know i'm just like this skinny geeky footy youtuber who just loves the eagles so who am i to talk about players hardening up that's a fair cop but in the context of criticizing a team for their performances no doubt the eagles are underperforming and it's plain for everyone to see so where do we go from here um to be honest i don't think we have too many options to be honest like we've got to keep our first round of this year uh, I would have said, regardless of what happens this year, we need to hit the draft. There's not too much we can do to proactively you know, speed this process up. I don't believe in rebuilds generally. I just don't think we'd need to be there yet. I think the personnel is fine in a sense, but they do need you know, a fucking bake right now. Kenny and Hearn have been good this year, but you know, similar to in 2017, we made some hard calls and pushed a couple of players into retirement, in particular, Matthew Prittis and rejuvenated the side with youth in 2018 and we all know what happened that year it's probably time we give up on trying to win a flag in the next couple of years you know Hearn can get replaced by Witherden Kennedy you know bring in Brandon for that opportunity give opportunity some youth who deserve it because at the moment we're achieving literally nothing and to be honest I'm not convinced we're a better side with the midfield that we had in that versus you know Luke Edwards who was one of the best on ground against Richmond there's there's they're not outperforming the kids it's gut check time for this playing group 
the coach and people criticize Simpson because of his press conferences. But I think people need to understand that Simpson does have, he has no respect for the media and his press conferences, he's made a point of saying he will always try and be the exact same mood, the exact same tone. He doesn't care about letting us know that he's angry. I think we saw that in the making that making your mark documentary, whatever it was where, you know, on the outside, the press conferences, he was fairly relaxed, but some of the bakes that he gave the playing group uh, show that, you know, he's going to absolutely lay into him. And I hope it manifests in, you know, his selection as well, the, you know, match committee's selection, because it's time to drop some of these players that don't deserve a spot. We need to get something out of the rest of this year. Like, I can't, I can't just sit down and watch us, you know, be mediocre. Like, fans of a club need to believe you know we're building towards something and if it's not finals this year which you know i think we can forget about realistically we need something to be excited about you know bring in some of the young talent that we have you know guys like luke edwards bailey williams jared brando should probably be playing the rest of the season in this team otherwise it's almost a complete waste of a season there's no other way to put it and hope we win the derby and, and the stupid thing is i, I we probably still win win the Derby. Based on, you know, everything that's happened over the last few, few years, we often go into the Derby completely shithouse. I remember people saying 2019, and Jonathan Brown, I think, said Fremantle with a better WA team and we beat them by 100 points that week. So hopefully we win the Derby. That's the only one I really care about losing. I can't see us, you know, revamping the entire game plan over overnight between the last six weeks of the season. It's probably not going to happen, but we probably need to play with a bit more dare. Go use the corridor a bit more. Play the youth. Just give us something to cheer. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that rant. Uh, you can see how angry I was during this game. Probably the result you're looking for against Sydney, but uh, I wasn't quite as angry in that game for whatever reason. This is a moment of serious review for the Eagles. And again, good on North Melbourne. Maybe not a successful season, but you know, there's certainly a lot of positives. Teams go through rebuilds. I don't fully agree with some of their list management decisions, but they're playing with spirit. Um, and there's certainly a lot of talent on that list. They, they need to add heaps to it. But in a year where, you know, this is hopefully as bad as it's going to get for North, they out-hunted a team that was, you know, had their backs to the wall and had should have had every motivation to win the game, out-hunted them, beat them, embarrassed them, and uh, that's where we are today. Anyway, guys, that's my thoughts. Um, if you're wondering why I didn't appear on the Drew Footy Show, it's because, you know, I, I was meant to go to the game, ended up not going, thank God. Um, so Drewzy organized a substitute. I told him that before the game, and at the start of the Drew Footy Show, he says that I didn't want to go on because we lost, but that's just bullshit. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments, uh, especially if you're an Eagles fan, what do you think of the situation? Um, I had a few people message me, but um, yeah, if you haven't, let me know. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.